ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय हरे कृष्णा दिस सॉन्ग आई फर्स्ट कैन टू माई अटेंशन must have been early 1990s when in the BBT in Juhu where I used to spend a lot of time uh, doing things like making that book the Hare Krishna Challenge there was one Mahamantra Das Brahmachari there who was uh, repeatedly singing this song with much enthusiasm he he learned thousands of shlokas and hundreds of songs uh later he took sanyas and is with the name bhakti vishram madhav maharaj <laughs> so i i just remembered while singing this and madhav maharaj came and then i remember that i first got inspired by this song by his own inspiration for it Hare Krishna. Last year in the Vyasa Puja festival I uh, said some very strong things. Uh, maybe strong even for me. Um, talking about uh, difficulties of various disciples whose attitude is not very laudable. so i would uh request you don't be bad disciples be good disciples i got some insight i i i always thought why well, shula probhat he said that when bhakti stan sarsar thakur saw the number of his neophyte disciples increasing he decided to leave this world i thought he has so much to give so much to offer but he left uh, but uh i can understand in my own small way how troublesome that can be so i request you to stick on the path straight and steady we all we all have our various uh impurities in our heart which is why we're in this world but we should since having come to the path of devotional service and particularly having taken the vow of initiation one should be fully dedicated to krishna krishna consciousness becoming purified dikha kale bhakta kare atha samarpan the time of initiation one fully offers one's own very self <coughs> so uh always remember that we are having taken initiation we represent our guru we don't want to cause him pain and embarrassment having said that last year i spoke in some detail about this i must say also that uh i have many worthy disciples yesterday evening with the reading from the vyasa puja book he could uh, understand the some quality of realization is there devotees are studying shila prabhupad's books uh, trying to understand them very seriously having various realizations the offerings were not what we might call stereotyped offerings by stereotype i mean of course every offering we expect that to be sincere but generally the same or in many vyasa puja offerings the same kind of thing is said the same verses are quoted there's nothing wrong with that but uh we saw that various devotees had uh, applying their intelligence and minds in krishna consciousness were uh, being reciprocated with by krishna they were able to uh, speak in 
various ways. Several of the offerings were unique. It doesn't mean you have to try and do something different every time. Just to, uh, It's not necessary to try to do something new. Or, if we simply repeat what we've heard, that is perfect. If we hear from the proper source. Uh, also, those who do misbehave help to see in better perspective those who are really striving, really sincere, working hard in Srila Prabhupada's mission. If we live among saints, we may not even recognize their saints because we just accept it as normal. So it does not that someone, again, it's not that someone has to try to be bad to put into better perspective those who are sincerely trying. But, uh, yeah, we do see that that, uh, devotees, if they apply themselves to this process of Krishna consciousness, they do become purified, they do become saintly, they can become empowered by Krishna to perform Uh, extraordinary activities in his service and we're seeing that in various ways among several of the devotees here. Uh, So I I thank you all for your kind uh, offerings to me apart from the verbal offerings which are made once a year. There's the uh, offering of our life day after day minute after minute, moment after moment. That is the uh, real offering. And uh, I I simply uh, aspire that I can be as dedicated in Srila Prabhupada's service as some of you are in my service. I find it embarrassing that some of you are so dedicatedly serving me and I can't serve Srila Prabhupada in such a good way Uh, but then you can know that that service uh, that is uh, properly offered to uh, Srila Prabhupada up through the Parampara to Krishna via myself so I should be a transparent medium and not choke up your sincere offerings by accepting them for my own sake. Uh, so, yes, Diksha Kale Bhakta Kare Atta Shamarpan. At the time of initiation, one fully offers oneself in the service of Hari, Guru, and Vaishnava. Uh, for those who are living as brahmacharis, sannyasis in the ashram or they have accepted this life for them there is no there should be no question of anything than complete dedication there is no meaning to uh, live in an ashram simply for the sake of living there one lives in an ashram for the sake of serving the arrangement is made for living to facilitate service. Not that the arrangement is made just for living. Then one becomes like a karmi non-devotee or like a like a bird in a nest or a snake in a hole. If we if we have no purpose for living in a place other than to eat, sleep, mate and defend. Well, brahmacharis are not meant to mate. And they're not meant to fight either. But even if they just sleep and eat, that is not brahmachari life. And those who only eat and sleep, they are not brahmacharis. They must become vebichari. They must fall down. So for renunciants, there is no question of anything but full dedication how is it possible for grihastas, family people, who have so many uh, social distractions, 
apart from the men at least having to work long hours for the sake of procuring money, uh, even in the spare time when one is not sleeping or engaged in other activities of bodily maintenance, uh, one has to see to the family affairs, there are uh, social obligations. Uh, so generally it's considered that Grihastas, Srila Prabhupada wrote that they have a license for sense gratification. It's almost expected that they will be uh, insipid. That means going, in, in this context, going along at a pretty dull rate, not able to uh, fully give their time and energy in Krishna's service. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we see among us uh, present today there are many married devotees who notwithstanding their family responsibilities are clearly uh, fully dedicated to Krishna. That is their life. Uh, the family responsibility, they're not uh, neglecting that. But their life is how to serve Krishna. And what a good life it is, as Radhesh Prabhu, in, every year in his Vyasa Puja offering, reminds myself and himself of the contrast between his former way of living and his present way of living, his former way of living. He was, uh, and Yudhishthya Maharaj uses this term in relationship to himself, Griya Murhadi. He is uh, in, living at home and simply bewildered in his intelligence. Very dull and useless life. But now he's, uh, and not only him, so many others are uh, inspired in Krishna consciousness. Their, their family activities are fully in relationship to Krishna. And they're also becoming empowered by Krishna to uh, spread his message. Uh, several of our devotees in Grihastha Ashram, they distribute so many of Srila Prabhupada's books. I, they, uh, they may be out doing the devotees in the ashram. How many in, in uh, Radhesh, your team in Surat, how many books did you distribute during December? Hmm? 21,000. Was that subsidized? Sub subsidy was there. That helps. And uh, I don't want to uh, minimize the efforts of the devotees in Salem, but together they did just a little less than that. Of course, a lot of the devotees distributing books in Salem, they're also Grihastas. It was half, they were practically full time. Mostly the Matajis. They were out in the women's colleges. Anyway, it's not exactly a competition. Srila Prabhupada made transcendental competition. So, next time you shouldn't be outdone. You should be on the phone every day. How many books did you do? And then you have to go ahead of... Srila Prabhupada stoked such a competition to, and it really got the book distribution going because most of his disciples were American and in this very competitive mood. That's very much there in India today also. Competitive mood, which is not traditionally part of Indian culture, but you have to be to even get a job. There, so many times there are government jobs. There'll be 20 jobs and 20,000 applicants, something like that. So, uh, yeah, Grihastha Shakti. <laughs> They're doing very well. So that book distribution is a very good opportunity for uh, devotees in Grihastha Ashram to uh, directly and uh, very significantly engage in Srila Prabhupada's 
service mm. and uh, spread this movement. Uh, there are also uh, opportunities, farm communities, this uh, Srila Prabhupada, he stressed this, uh, that uh, Krihasta devotees can live on farms, live simply, chant Hare Krishna, uh, without having to uh, sweat to earn some Bifale Shavinu Kripana Durajana Chapala Shuka Lava Lagi Govinda Das wrote this some few hundred years ago and it's even much more applicable at the present time that people are it's almost everyone their life this is the description that they're working uselessly for some useless person who gives them as little money as possible and squeezes the maximum out of them and what for? just for a little sense gratification. So, of course, devotees, they're not interested in sense gratification, but they get caught up in this life of working hard. So the farm community, Srila Prabhupada wanted, devotees can come and live peacefully together, chant Hare Krishna together. And uh, several Grihastha devotees of uh, present here have done that giving up their good jobs. Good job means instead of being beaten with an iron bar, you're beaten with a golden bar. That's all. It's more prestigious. Uh, several devotees uh, have done that. Uh, Nata Goranga Prabhu is heading up a community in Gujarat Several other uh, devotees have joined him, the Nityananda Krishna, who I didn't see here, he's probably there at the farm. Sribanganan Prabhu recently joined. Uh, and many of the uh, Grihastas who are doing business and this and that, they're helping with that. Sundagaranga also, he, he left previously, left his job in Goa and was just doing some s small shop and now he's there at the farm also. Farm and Gurukul, this uh, Srila Prabhupada emphasized, so important, these Gurukuls for training the children so that they don't have to g grow up with all wrong ideas. Maybe half or more of our effort in trying to be Krishna conscious is just trying to keep out all the nonsense ideas that we have acquired through having a good education and having a normal upbringing. Normal upbringing means that normal upbringing in the modern age means we become full of kam, krod, lo, moha, madha, matsarya, ityadi, full of lust, greed, anger, envy, illusion, pride, and so on. That's a normal upbringing. If we have a normal upbringing in the modern world, then we become a fit candidate for going to hell. And in fact, modern life is increasingly hellish. I just saw some description. Maybe you're a you're probably, I'm sure you're all aware that these uh, beheadings are going on in this, uh, in what used to be Iraq. But I, something I saw in the news was even, I'm actually shocked and I keep on thinking about it day after day. It's something so horrible. Uh, it's, it's worse than beheading that women the whole day the, these terrorists or whatever you want to call them they go into different villages and they kill all the men and they take the women and then you can imagine what they do and then they sell them into prostitution what could be more horrible I, I mean the American troops are going there they should just, if they really want to do anything they should just go in there and finish them all off if they actually, if they actually want to stop 
It's just unbelievably horrible. Uh, yesterday I was given some... Now I'm getting off topic. My, As usual, I get off topic. But these are important topics. That uh, Dr. Sahadev Das, maybe you know, he's writing so many books. And on... on uh, Topics that are Krishna conscious books on topics that are absolutely relevant to the modern age. He wrote a he wrote a book on uh, oil, oil depletion, peak oil, and all this, which in India I think hardly anyone knew about it. And uh, on every page he gave a quote from Prabhupada, along with his own writing. It's quite a thick book. And the, uh, he gave a copy to the then chief minister of Andhra Pradesh, whose name I can't remember, who died in a helicopter crash. He was a Christian. Reddy, some Reddy. Hmm? Raj Shekhar Reddy. And he was so impressed by this that he made Sahadev Das into Dr. Sahadev Das. He gave him, he arranged for him to have an honorary PhD. And uh, he carried that book with him, and he was so impressed by. It, he said, "Oh, this uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami, he must he must be a top lion oil engineer." <laughs> so anyway, what I'm coming to the point. I just got some of his books yesterday. One of his books, uh, I, I just saw the cover, and I can't exactly remember the title, but. It was that if you, if we want to stop terrorism, we have to close the slaughterhouses. No one thinks of that. They think, send in the troops. Check everyone at the airport. It won't stop. As long as there are slaughterhouses of animals, there will be slaughterhouses of humans also. Another of his books, which I was given yesterday, gave the title that what the Muslims couldn't do in 800 years and the British couldn't do in 200 years, an Italian woman has done in 10 years. She's made India mass beef exporter. Which, as I often say in uh, various lectures, that if in India even once a year one cow one cow was killed that would be a great disgrace for this country but literally thousands are killed every day so we have a lot of work to do people don't know they they think it's good for the economy so we really have a lot of work to do that's why this bhagavad darshan is also very important because Devotees are supposed to write articles for mass distribution, taking the teachings of Srila Prabhupada and applying them as Srila Prabhupada did as he made Bhagavad Darshan in 1944. Various topical issues. People, they don't know the solution. What, what are you going to do about terrorism? Kill all the terrorists. Well, the more you kill, the more they come up. It's like that. Hydra-headed monster. You cut off every head. You cut off ten more come. That's from Greek mythology. Uh, ultimately, there has to be a revolution of consciousness. People have to become purified in consciousness, and people have to understand the issues. They don't understand the issues. They they've studied this so many scientific laws, but they don't know the law of karma. That if, if we kill, we shall also have to be killed. In the army, we have, I'm just looking here at Raman from the army. And yesterday, Anupam Vallabhi told some narration, told us some narration from his army days. Is he here now? Also, Sachinanda from Russia. He just came out of the army. So I, I, I wonder in the Indian army, are they, 
Are they aware of this? Their business, their, their whole business, they're trained, they have a huge, more than one million staff. The whole point is to kill people. I mean, ultimately, that's what the army is meant for. Uh, when required. But do they, uh, do they have knowledge of the laws of karma? Maybe they have some vague idea. But th this knowledge should be given. Knowledge. It's not, as people say to us, do you believe in reincarnation? It's, just, it's actually a foolish question. In as much as it's not a question of belief. Do you believe in the laws of physics? It's not a question of belief. Either it's a fact or it's not a fact. So we should understand. It's a fact. There's plenty of evidence for all that. So this knowledge should be given. You have to distribute Srila Prabhupada's books. We have to... Uh, this Bhagavad Darshan should not be... Uh, any less strident than when Srila Prabhupada made it in 1944 during the Second World War. It should speak with a loud, clear voice. Utare, utare bhai, arto shamai nai. Get up, get up, brothers. There's no more time. Don't waste our time simply in petty affairs. So we we say the whole world is going to hell. Practically it's like hell. And we don't know where it will come next. Just like in Syria, people presume a few years ago people were going about their life pretty much in the same way as they do here in Kanchipuram. Or in, they'd get up in the morning, go to work, kids would go to school. Now it's complete hell. So that can happen anywhere, anytime. We have to distribute these books and give this knowledge of Krishna consciousness so that at least individually people can be saved. But the whole society needs to be reformed. So this Vanashram, farms, at the moment we have just a few devotees doing that. But Srila Prabhupada said that millions will join our farms. They'll need to because where will the food be? When the oil runs out or the water runs out or the electricity stops flowing, uh, the monetary system, economic system collapses, what will you do? Yes, yanti giri kananam. That's stated in Bhagavatam. In Kali Yoga, people, they will go to the hills and forests. Now in Russia, the Russian devotees have come. The... Uh, Economic situation has become very bad due to sanctions. But those who are living on the farm there, Dobri Mush, like Ananda Swarup, he's, uh, you're growing your, at least a lot of your food, I hope. Even though there's only about six months growing season because the rest of the year the, the, it's all covered with ice and snow. So here in India, it's actually very easy to grow food. In, in, like in Russia, you, you have six months to grow your food and to collect the firewood to keep you warm for the rest of the time. So you have to work hard six months. But here in this part of the world, if you, uh, <laughs> you eat some raw tomatoes and then the next day you pass it out in the field, and after a short time, you'll find there's a tomato plant. <laughs> Everything just grows by itself. The seeds come out. Everything just grows. Practically, you don't have to put in a lot of work. So here, there should be uh, farm. You see here, there's India, one of the parts of the culture, flower culture. There are flowers everywhere. Flowers, here in South India, the women put flowers in their hair. It's another part of the culture which is gradually dying away. Uh, flowers for every celebration. Bec Why is that? Because traditionally uh, people, they lived 
in a way they didn't have so much industrial aspirations or necessities and the land produced so much food and, and plenty of flowers can grow also. Everyone will be fed and there will be flowers also. So at least here we should have these Varnashram communities. So getting back to the point a little bit, thank you all for the uh, Grihastas who are doing that, who have the courage, uh, the faith that uh, Bhumi Devi, our mother, the earth, who is the wife of Krishna, she will uh, nourish us if we treat her well and chant Hare Krishna, she'll be very pleased. Depending on the land and cows and Krishna, we can live very simply. We don't need to live in these hellish cities. Uh, we can be very happy living on the farm. So I can encourage all of you to do so. Uh, those of you uh, who are Grihastas living in the cities, uh, uh, you should also uh, donate funds. We don't push anyone to do so. Uh, we don't force anyone, but... Uh, as we read in Srila Prabhupada's books, and that is of course in Shastra, that uh, Grihastha's duty is to give in charity, that would especially be in Varnashram society, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, Brahmanas also, they're supposed to give in charity. That means they accept charity and what extra they don't need, they give it away. And then the modern age Shudras are also earning uh, practically everyone's a Shudra. Earning money in a company means uh, that's called in Bhagavatam Shvavriti, the uh, means of livelihood of a dog. That means you have to uh, work for a master. So uh, everyone should give. Srila Prabhupada often wrote about 50%. Uh, we don't expect actually devotees to give 50% because uh, mostly uh, devotees are struggling to make ends meet. But you could give at least 5%. Uh, some sacrifice should be there. Uh, give funds to help push on this Krishna consciousness movement. Those of you in family life whose uh, immediate responsibilities are finished, that means your children are grown up and married. Of course, nowadays they marry very late, but at least if they're working and able to look after themselves, then there's no real need for you to go on working. You can uh, retire from working and take up serving Krishna full-time, you don't have to wait till the age of 65 or so to retire. Well, there's still, that's the general age of retirement, that when, that when the body is completely worn out and they can't squeeze you anymore, then they allow you to retire. But you can retire earlier while there's still some strength and energy left in the body and give that strength and energy full-time in Krishna service. And there are quite a few devotees present here again uh, who have done that uh, Radhesh Prabhu said yesterday he's going for Vana Prasala I'm not sure exactly what that means because uh, well he has a son who's still uh, going to college or school or whatever but uh, otherwise he's practically, practically full time anyway um, others there are so many actually Radha Radhya Prabhu is uh, and his wife, Vishnu Swami Prabhu, he was, he, uh, he asked me what he could do. I gave several suggestions. One of them was Padhyatra, and he did it. He just got some bulls and got a cart, and he's been wandering around Telangana village to village, day in, day out, come rain, come shine, come cold. So this is laudable. That uh, to have that inspiration, not to be attached to uh, earning money, living comfortably in some apartment, 
What is the use of such a life? Of course, you can chant Hare Krishna at home, but if we're actually reading Prabhupada's books and becoming, we have to become inspired by them. Now what, what, what can we do? What should we do to uh, push on this movement in uh, various ways? Narayan Srinivasa, there are so many. Young men, Gaur Bhagavan, uh, thought that, well, I have, I'm still young and uh, I don't really want to work. Even though he had a good job, well-paying job, now he has no income. <laughs> Krishna's looking after him. Young man with young children. Uh, but he's... Uh, of course, not everyone may be in that position because he was able to save some money. So we're not condemning anyone who's not able to do that. But see if you can. See, see what you can do. As soon as possible, get out of the... Uh, life, the stressful life of working hard simply to earn money and give your life to Krishna. You might find, having done so, that you're working harder. You may think, well, I'll, I'll, I'll leave this job and then I can relax. But we won't let you. <laughs> no relaxation. But it's blissful. Just as working for non-devotees saps one's very life energy, working for Krishna gives more and more energy. So please come forward and do that. There are so many. I, I noted some names. Hare Krishna Prabhu is doing that. Sridhar Srinivas. They're both selling books and maintaining their family situation. Vrindavan Nath is more or less just his business is going on. Someone's looking after it. Radha Khan Prabhu, I suggested uh, he could go to Malawi, which is one of the poorest countries in the world. And from what I understand from descriptions there, uh, it's a uh, what we could call culturally backward kind of place. But he's gone. He's dedicated. We, we don't expect him to spend his whole life there. He also has young children. But he took that risk for Krishna. Undoubtedly, Krishna will be very pleased with devotees who uh, make the sacrifice to uh, serve Krishna in the best possible way. So we have this uh, very high, elevated process of Krishna consciousness. Krishna is supreme and service to him is the supreme occupation in human society. Savai pung sang paro dharmo yato bhaktir adhokshaja ahaitokya pratiyata yayatna suprasiddhati You should all learn this verse. If you learn verses, not everyone has the uh, mental capacity or proclivity to learn verses. If you, you should, if you haven't learned this verse, you should learn this. That the highest occupation uh, for all human beings is uh, unmotivated and uninterrupted service to the transcendent Lord, loving devotional service. Only such service can fully satisfy the self. So we have very uh, great opportunity. We're very fortunate to have this very elevated process of Krishna consciousness. We should take to it wholeheartedly in whatever situation we may be. It's not possible for everyone just to uh, cut out of the materialistic society. Although it may be more possible than you think it is. It may seem impossible, but uh, it can be possible for you also. One lady was introduced to me yesterday. She's in a joint family. She's the only one interested in bhakti. So in such a situation, she's not able to cut out of that. She has to 
practice Krishna consciousness in the best way she can in that difficult situation. But whatever situation we are in, we should take to Krishna consciousness wholeheartedly. Don't be a, a half devotee. Uh, that means just like if you cook rice and you only half cook it, it's not very palatable or digestible. So we should be fully, we shouldn't be kacha, we should be pakka. Every is fully in Krishna's service. That, that is the meaning of uh, anyabila ashita shunyam. Bhakti that is free from, even, from the cultivation of extraneous desires. Tivra bhakti, intense bhakti, uh, focused. A.K. Hakur, Vyavasaya Atmika here A.K. Hakurananda. Focused, in, fully focused in Krishna consciousness. Srila uh, Prabhupada, so I'm told, I heard this uh, many years ago. I, it's not written down exactly. Uh, not written down, but Srila uh, Prabhupada said to a group of his Disciples, there was a leaders meeting, temple leaders meeting in Berkeley, California, in which uh, Srila Prabhupada said to all of them that uh, now your life is glorious and you should now try to make others glorious. So our life is dhanya, our life is glorious, elevated, we should try to bring others to this life also. Etavaj janma safal yang dehinam iha dehishu prana artai dhyavacha shreya acharanam sada. This uh, verse from Srimad Bhagavatam is quoted in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita in the context of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordering all his followers and especially all persons born in India to preach Krishna consciousness. Uh, the translation is roughly as follows that uh, having attained this human birth we should uh, a very uh, fortunate birth we should and make it successful by dedicating our life energy, our money, our intelligence, and our words in such a way as to always act for the benefit of others, for the ultimate benefit of others. Also quoted there is, Yeah, similar quote. Praninam upakaraya. Praninam upakaraya yadeveha. Paratracha. Karamana amanasava chatadeva matiman bhajit. Doing benefit for others. Real welfare work. By mind, body, and words. This is the way we should worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we should. This should be our life. By the grace of Srila Prabhupada, we're all uplifted in the practice of Krishna consciousness. Uh, now we should see what we can do to help others. Dedication is required. Uh, this is the uh, real meaning of being a disciple. There's no meaning to being a disciple unless one uh, dedicates himself in the service of the Guru, the service of Guru and Krishna. Uh, again, from uh, Bhagavatam, uh, this is a verse I quoted, I think, almost every year in this Vyasa Puja ceremony. This is a verse spoken by Krishna's Guru, uh, Sandipani Muni, to Krishna, uh, who Krishna, apart from being the best uh, lover, the best master, the best archer, 
the best yogi, Yogeshvara, he's, as, he's also the best disciple. He's best in everything. So, stated to him, Etadeva he satchit shai, kartavyam guru nishkritam, yadvai vishuddha bhavena, sarvartatmarpanam guru. This is certainly the duty of a genuine disciple uh, to offer his life fully, everything, in the service of the Guru, uh, everything he has, uh, with purified consciousness. Okay. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.